Hello, I am David W. Parker. This is Programming Today I Learned. We're going to be starting a new series here for Rails, and this is going to be the back end that we're going to end up using and building for a lot of different applications. So it's going to be kind of a follow along, though you don't have to do all of them and you don't have to do them in order. Uh, all of the source code will be on GitHub as per usual. Um, we're going to go ahead and follow along and we're going to build, build a real application. Um, I built Listen Addict last year. If you want to go ahead and check that out. I'm also building another application called useproducer.com, so just producer is what I'm calling it. And the back end is going to be predominantly in Rails. But what I'm going to be showing you here is how you can have a different front end from the back end. So the, the Rails application is going to be an API, and it's just going to be a very simple API that responds to JSON requests. That way I can build my front end with whatever tool I would like. Um, we're going to go ahead and do Svelte initially, but you know, if I want to use React or if I want to use Vue, I could use Next, Gatsby, I could use uh, Nuxt, uh, any of these frameworks I can. Uh, additionally, if I want to go ahead and use Flutter, I'll also have that as an option. So both of these will be uh, ways to communicate with the backend Rails application. Similarly, if I want to switch out Rails for Django or something else down the road, I can. So let's go ahead and get started building this new Rails application. We're going to talk briefly about it. I'm not going to go into all of the particulars of Rails. Um, I will talk a little bit briefly about it for some people, but it, it's going to be a lot of decisions I've already made. I will try to explain them the best I can. Um, however, I won't be going into deep dive details about every little thing. So if you're a beginner, I definitely uh, recommend checking out the Rails guides. So let's go ahead and click over here and start taking a look. So we have here a command line prompt, and this is really the only command I'm going to be running in this. So it's Rails new programming TIL Rails 1, and yes, the name of your application, dash dash API, meaning we're not going to have a front end for this Rails application, dash dash database equals Proscus. And you could be using SQLite here if you'd like, or you could use MySQL. My preference is Postgres. Uh, we can talk about that in another application or another episode, which we likely will. So if you go ahead and run that, you'll end up with this set of code right here. So you can see we have a, an application, bin, config, coverage uh, is different, uh, db, lib tasks, uh, log, public, spec, storage, test, temp, and vendor. Uh, actually, it'll only show up with tests initially. I'm added spec, uh, as that is what I use. I will be removing the test one in the future. I, I use rspec rather than mini test and the other test frameworks. And so this presumes, of course, to run this, you have to have installed Ruby, of course. You also will have how to install Rails itself. Uh, those are both very easy to find on Google if you don't already know how to install Ruby and you do not know how to install Rails. So let's go ahead and just take a brief look at what a Rails application has, and then we will start to go ahead and build and expand on it. So app is basically the majority of where your application is going to live. Um, channels is going to be uh, used for application cable. I won't be using that in my application, so you can ignore it for now. Uh, if I end up doing anything that requires it, I will well talk about it in that episode. Um, controllers, along with config um, routes down here, is where you're going to go ahead and make your application accessible to consumers, basically. So you'll provide a route, which will link to a specific controller action and a response to some kind of request, uh, whether get put, post, or delete, and then makes some kind of JSON response. Jobs is where you're going to go ahead and put background uh, delayed job type things. Uh, we'll be using Redis and Sidekick later on, but any time you want to have a long running task or some kind of data processing, you're going to want to respond quickly to the end user uh, to let them know, hey, this is started, but then go ahead and run this other task in the background. Mailers is where your application can run mail and do emails. I've used both uh, SendGrid in the past. Um, I've also used um, a couple of others. I can't recall offhand, but 
I'm currently using, um, not using Sandgrid. I will, when we get to that, I, I'll refresh my memory of which one I'm actually using currently. Um, but we will be sending some emails. Uh, we'll also play with some gems that allow us to send emails locally and check out what it looks like ahead of time so we don't have to just use a provider. Models are going to tie to a, a particular um, table, generally speaking, within Postgres. So if you have a user model, that'll have a user's table uh, on the back end. We can go ahead and take a look and compare. And the user model will be using Active Record, um, which is what Rails provides out of the box to make uh, queries. It's an ORM, Object Relational Map Error. Um, I would go ahead and say that you should know SQL. You should learn SQL. I like Active Record, and we'll get into details on what it can provide out of the box. But you shouldn't just naively trust uh, Active Record to make the best decisions for you. So we're going to make very concerted effort to make sure that our our understanding of SQL is really really um, fine and under, we understand it well, so that we're making good queries that are scalable in the long run. Finally, views is what's going to be on the front end uh, for the user. Within our application, because it's only an API, the only real views that we're going to have are via uh, our emails. We'll go ahead and jump over to config here. Bin is where the application runs through. This is where our, our commands are for, for bundling stuff, for running Rails, rig tasks, etc. So over in config, we have three different environments out of the box. Development, which is your local machine. Production, which is your production instance, and test. Generally speaking, I also like to add a staging um, environment that mirrors production. Uh, depending on how you want to run it or name it, that can or cannot be a good thing or whatever. But generally, you want to have a deployed instance of your production server that you can test against that's not just your local machine. Initializers will be good where you want to run code that happens while the initial uh, the application is loading. Locales allows you to set internationalization. So it comes with ian.yaml as the default. You can go ahead and add different locales, though. So if your audience is based in France or Spain or Mexico or uh, wherever the case may be, and you want to provide multiple languages to your user, this is how you're going to end up doing it. And finally, within the rest of config here, we have a few other uh, resources. We'll go ahead and take just a brief look at a couple of them. Uh, database.yaml is one of the more important ones. This is where you're going to define your database for your production, your database for test, your database for development. And so you could see each of these has the name of the database and it'll provide the connection uh, information that is needed. Application, go ahead and get rid of that, is we're going to be able to set a configuration for your application. We'll go ahead and be setting some things in there later as well. And then finally, let's go scroll down here. We have DB. Right now, we don't have any migrations, but migrations are how we are going to go ahead and create database tables, create views, go ahead and modify tables, uh, anything like that. Seeds is a, a way to seed your database with initial data, so it's a way to provide initial data. Lib tasks is where you can put rake tasks. If you're not familiar with rake, we may explore that in the future, but basically it's a way to run uh, one-off commands. Uh, as well as just having generic commands that if you're running, say, like a cron job or some kind of regular task, you can go ahead and uh, create rake tasks to automatically do things. Finally, we have log, where you'll have logs. Public, which would be the public uh, resource for the application. Uh, active storage and a, a few other files here. Of course, git ignore, because we're going to ignore things, our Ruby version, and... If you're not familiar with Rails and Ruby in general, you should be um, before starting something like this. But gem files, we're, we're going to be providing different gems that we use within our application. So you can see here we're on Ruby 3.0, Rails with Postgres, Puma is our application server, and we have a few other optional ones within our test and development groups. And then some that are already provided to you but are commented out that we'll be changing and adding some later in the future.
So that's it for this initial episode. We're just kind of have a brief overview of the Rails structure, and we're going to go ahead and get started building this application now.